Loudoun is a fantastic place to build a global business. Loudoun is a great place to live, work, and play. There's a lot to love about Loudoun County. It's a terrific place to establish a business. Loudoun is a very business-friendly environment. We can get anywhere in the world from Dallas Airport. We have leading education. Loudoun County, Virginia. One of those places that wants to pass itself off as a slice of Americana. Now, maybe they've got a great opportunity there to do real business and yet live in a very safe, pastoral-type setting. But their education system has absolutely eroded, imploded, and exploded. Typical of what liberal Democrats do. Whatever they put their hands to, they ruin. If it works when they get their hands on it, it's broken by the time they're through with it. Why? Because it's the way this ilk thinks. It's the way this ilk acts. And they are the biggest suppressionists of freedom and the freedom of speech. They talk about diversity. They talk about the freedom to express yourself. And you are allowed to have a freedom of speech as long as it agrees with them. As long as it fits their narrative, their agenda. Facts be damned. We're not interested in that. We're simply interested in getting out the narrative. Period. And if you aren't willing to go along with that, we have ways of making you be quiet. For example... Many of us, a year ago, were outing Dr. Fauci for the fraud that he was. What happened? We got censored, deplatformed, social media restriction, placed in Facebook jail, and on and on and on it went. When we came out and exposed, over a year ago, the lab leak theory, what happened? We were conspiracists. We were nuts. We were loons. We were defender of Orange Man. Now, all of a sudden, it's okay to call into question the credibility of Dr. Fauci. The truth is, he's still doing what he's always done, fear-mongering to cover his own backside. And to a certain degree, the Biden administration, leaving him out there a little bit to twist in the wind. Why? Is it because they don't see that there's a benefit to the agenda of the virtue signaling and, and keeping us all under restriction? No, they like that. They, they, they were gaining in power on that. The problem is the Biden administration is so crumbling on every other front that they're facing that they need something good to talk about. They need something positive in the news cycle. And so Biden has decided he's going to take a victory lap on. He's the guy that beat COVID, even though it's not lining up with Fauci. And isn't it interesting how the media is not in any way covering how Fauci and Biden disagree. They loved it when they can say Fauci and Trump disagreed. But now that it's okay to talk about Fauci, it's only because the liberals have now yet another agenda they want to further. So that they're they're giving us an appeared freedom, and it's really not a freedom. It's not a guarantee. Like a freedom is supposed to be a guarantee. They're giving us a privilege. You have the privilege now to speak on this subject. Loudoun County, Virginia, has what they like to advertise themselves as the most woke school system in America. And they've been in the news a lot. It goes back to just after the first of the year, and they were continuing to keep their schools closed. And parents had had enough. Yep. You should all be fired from your day jobs because... If your employers knew that you were more inefficient than the, than the DMV, you would be replaced in a heartbeat. I literally just finished a conference call because I'm having to multitask to be here to, to address you guys. You're a bunch of cowards hiding behind our children as an excuse for keeping schools closed. You think you're some sort of martyrs because of the decisions you're making when the statistics do not lie that the vast majority of the population is not at risk from this virus. The garbage workers who pick up my freaking trash 
risk their lives every day more than anyone in this school system. Figure it out or get off the podium. Because you know what? There are people like me and a lot of other people out there who will gladly take your seat and figure it out. It's not a high bar. Raise the freaking bar! No offense to that dad because it's obvious he's a hardworking man. He's trying to teach his kids duty, dedication, responsibility. Here's a news flash. They're not going to get it in that school system. Either homeschool them or get them in a good Christian school or move out of that area because I wouldn't trust anyone in that school system to have influence over my child. And the teachers that are trying to make a real difference, the teachers that are trying to stand up and speak out, well, they're being suspended, fired, removed. One teacher from the Loudoun County school system decided to face off against his school board that when they finally did reopen the schools, there wasn't a new agenda. And it wasn't about reading, writing, and arithmetic. No, no. Nay, nay. It's about social reengineering and this big experiment on we're going to honor students with the personal pronouns of their choice. And basically, other students being in trouble if they didn't follow it, and teachers being in trouble if they didn't follow it and enforce it. And one teacher said, we got to stop this insanity. My name is Tanner Cross, and I'm speaking out of love for those who suffer with gender dysphoria. 60 Minutes this past Sunday interviewed over 30 young people who transitioned but they felt led astray because lack of pushback or how easy it was to make physical changes to their bodies in just three months. They are now detransitioning. It's not my intention to hurt anyone, but there are certain truths that we must face when ready. We condemn school policies like 8040 and 8035 because it will damage children, defile, defile the holy image of God. I love all of my students, but I will never lie to them regardless of the consequences. I'm a teacher, but I serve God first, and I will not affirm that a biological boy can be a girl and vice versa, because it's against my religion, it's lying to a child, it's abuse to a child, and it's sinning against our God. He was suspended. A judge stepped in and said, no, you can't suspend him over that. And then the school board basically said, we're not giving him his job back, so it's now being litigated. Well, finally, Loudoun County decided to have a meeting and invite the parents in where they could speak their mind on everything from the sexual identification or the sexual orientation identification of students to the critical race theory. And the first one out the gate happened to be a flaming atheist. Today, instead of focusing on the hate that seems to be dripping off the followers of Jesus in their room, in this room, and from their kids in our schools, I wanted to take the time. Oh, wait. I can wait. Well, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. And of course, she's not really there discussing the topic at hand. She just wanted to go on the attack against Christians that they're filled with hate. Yes, I know, because teaching that all lives matter, that's hate filled. Teaching that. Jesus Christ gave himself for everyone and that he's absolutely colorblind, that's hate-filled. To say that we don't want our kids singled out because they can't help the fact that they were born white, they can't help the fact that they have certain characteristics that are inherently born in them and has nothing to do with their raising, their training, etc. It's a thing we call genetics. You know, remember, it's supposed to follow the science. But oh no, 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 no. You're preaching hate. Well, finally, the conservative parents, they got to speak, and they got to begin to set the record straight until they began pointing out the obvious that these are not public schools, this is a government school. The Western culture and values that brought forth Christianity in the founding documents are being called evil and racist. I'm reminded of the tyranny of communist China, where your money is legally stolen and then used in government schools not public schools, these are not public schools, these are government schools, like here, to indoctrinate children against their parents. My child is not oppressed, and don't assume that. As long as you Marxists push your unconstitutional agenda on my child, she will not be returning back to Mount County schools. I have been saying for years, 
Get your kids out of public schools. They're not public schools. They are government schools, which means they're not really educational institutions. They are indoctrination centers. This has been going on across the country for literally four decades. Get your kids out of public schools. Get them out. Get them out. Get them out. When it became obvious of the almost 300 people that showed up to the school board meeting that the comments were going to go about 50 to 1 in the conservative direction. Well, the school board decided we got to shut this meeting down and declare it an unlawful assembly by turning the mics off the conservative parents. I've noticed a pattern. You treat your bosses, most of us, like children. You treat the woke mob, your employees and teachers unions, like the boss. And you treat children who have not harmed you like pawns in your leftist social experiment. When you give us a timeout for clapping, uh, we hear you saying, look at me, I am the captain now. You're not the captain, we're your bosses, and God willing, we'll return most of you to the private sector very soon. You're teaching children to hate others because of their skin color. And you're forcing them to lie about other kids' gender. I am disgusted by your bigotry. And your Typical and classic liberal progressive behavior. When you lose on facts, you insult. When the other side really comes ready, armed with information, armed with articulation, armed with arguments which cannot be debated against, then you just shut it down. You're like the little kid that's in the middle of a game and it's not going his way. So you just pick the ball up and say, we're going to start over. Or I'm going home if we don't play by my rules. And that's what liberals do. They can't articulate and argue intellectually, academically, with real information. Because as soon as they get challenged, like a Dr. Fauci, when you question me, you're questioning science. No, we're questioning a fraud who's covering his backside that he unleashed a pandemic on all of us. We're, on, we're, we're criticizing the fact that you purposely used the pandemic for your own personal gain, and this was a way for you and Bill Gates and Mike Pence to make sure that we had this worldwide problem that a love potion number nine was required for because this is about lining up the citizens and turning them into absolute mindless sheeple who just do as they're told. That's what we're talking about, Fauci. It ain't about, we're not, we're not questioning science. What we're questioning is the fact that there is such a lack of real science in this problem of a, of, of a outbreak that has a 99.8% survival rate even before we found a quote-unquote magic love potion number nine. So when we began to question, well, why are we having to do this? And why are we not talking about other treatments that can be done? And we got muzzled and censored. That's when we knew something going on. But this is what liberals do. They are anti-free thought. They are anti-free speech. They are applauding the fact that the President of the United States, President Donald Trump, has been kicked off of all social media platforms. Great, great, yeah. No more orange man. Till it's your opinion that gets muzzled, silenced. Well, you, you, these are private companies. You still have freedom of speech. Yeah. There's a difference between digging a hole in my backyard, sticking my head in it, and screaming anything I want to, and being able to actually have a platform, a venue from which to share it from. But in the midst of this darkness, and this is, and I'm, I'm going to say something, and some of you aren't going to like it, and I don't care. This satanic darkness, and that's what it is. It is an absolute, unmitigated, demonic assault on the United States and all that we hold near and dear when it comes to freedom. When you have students being convinced and coerced by adults in their life to stunt their natural growth, to stunt their, their, their development as a male or a female, and to allow Dr. Frankensteins to do experimentation on their bodies and turn them from boys to girls and girls to boys and to declare yourself bisexual, pansexual, non-sexual, animal sexual. Remember, 
Satan is a created being as Lucifer in heaven. He rebelled, took a third of the angels with him. Some of you know the story, the theology behind that. And thus we have evil in the world because he's a fallen angel, tempting man. You do understand that he is so angry because man who was created after him is God's highest level of creation created in the image of God, which is what Satan wanted. He wanted to be God. That was the rebellion. That's what got him kicked out of heaven. And the fact that man has been created in God's image, Satan brought sin into the world. That brought condemnation. Jesus Christ came. He laid his life down on the cross of Calvary that if anyone would receive him as their Savior, as the payment for their sin, they would be saved, redeemed, and have an eternal home with God, and thus one day be glorified. That is the gospel in a nutshell, and Satan loathes, hates, and despises man. So anything that he can do to get man to defile the fact that he is created in the image of God, he loves it. So when he can get two men shacked up, if I see one more Amazon commercial with two dudes in a hot tub making out because it's Amazon Prime, Prime day, I'm going to hurl, I'm going to puke. So now we're mutilating children. We got drag queens reading to kids because we're indoctrinating them. We're all about this pansexual society, Marvel Comics and, and, and Marvel Studios with, with one of their Disney productions now introducing a new supervillain who's a pansexual. And what we're doing is we're teaching kids kids, not adults, kids, you can have sex and put your sexual organs on anything you want. That is how warped and depraved we have become. And it's being fostered in classrooms and Loudonville is simply, or I'm sorry, Loudon County is simply the example, the tip of the iceberg. But the good news is there are people across the country, they are seeing it, they are speaking out. In some places, it's too late. My prediction is, going into the fall, Christian schools and private schools and parochial schools are going to see an explosion in enrollment. But mark it down, even that's not safe, because in the blue states, the, the liberal legislative bodies will go after those schools. They'll have to be accredited, which means you'll have to teach critical race theory. You'll have to do this, 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 and this, or you will not be giving out diplomas that are legally recognized by the state. But um, bump. This this war is being fought on many fronts, people. But what is exciting is seeing the fact that there are kids who get it, kids who are standing up and speaking out, like this high school freshman. Hi, my name is Brad Taylor, and I just finished my freshman year at RHS. Um, I've been a part of District 196 schools now for 10 years, and I'm going to give you a glimpse today of what's actually going on inside these schools. Um, despite the board's attempt to deny it, District 196 schools are quickly becoming a place where promoting activism is actually more important than promoting education. I'll take, you, I'll take you back to my first day at RHS this fall. The principal came out and gave us a heartfelt speech about equality and standing together. Um, he began to list countless races, such as Latino, Asian, expressing how much they matter and how important they are. But never once did he mention a race or identity that reflects me or half the kids that were in the class. To be clear, I don't need you to tell me that I matter, but hearing the condolences given to other races and leaving just one race out, it inevitably you'll start to feel like you've done something wrong. And in our principal's attempt to unify us, he instead created unwarranted boundaries and barriers between his students, pitting us against each other based on characteristics that we can't control. In another separate instance, I was told that writing all lives matter on the whiteboard was political and could be seen as offensive. When I questioned the teacher after class, she told me that she didn't have an answer and she just had to erase it, and it was quickly erased. There are political signs all over RHS specific, about specific races that matter, specific sexual orientations that matter, and specific perspectives that matter. But when I questioned the RHS administration about how these signs were political, they told me that they were supporting human rights. So when I questioned why the equity statement couldn't represent all students, they told me that to even ask that question was outlandish and offensive. And they, when I asked why that was, they told me, quote, whites have a pretty good situation right now, unquote. So is that not racism? Disregarding my question merely because of the color of my skin. I've been approached by multiple teachers who have told me in private that they just want to say that they agree with me and they support me standing up, but they can't say it in front of the class for fear of being disciplined by the administration in some way or losing their jobs. 
Now, due to all these instances I've mentioned and many more that I can't fit in this five minute speech, I've decided to leave this district and continue school on a private Christian school online. And, and there will be sacrifices and I will not get to walk in the graduation ceremony or attend milestones at RHS, but I will be able to learn in an environment that is not intent on punishing me daily for my skin color and political views. Now, regardless of how you take my speech, whether you just shrug it off as malarkey or Fox News talking points, I encourage you to think about it because someday I'm going to be a leader. I may be the president, a governor, or just a professional golfer, but I will never stop believing that everybody has value, no matter their skin color or personal beliefs. And it's a shame that you're not going to be able to say that I was an alumni of RHS in District 196. Thank you. And my personal absolute favorite from the state of Minnesota, not exactly a conservative bastion, but from the state of Minnesota, this nine-year-old girl who really puts the cherry on the sundae. The other day I was walking down the hallway at Lakeview Elementary School to give a teacher a retiring gift. I looked up onto the wall and saw a BLM poster and an Amanda Gorman poster. In case you don't know who that chick is, she's some girl who did a poem at Biden's so-called inauguration. I was so mad. I was told two weeks ago at this very meeting spot no politics in school. I believed what you said at this meeting. So at lunch, I went up to my principal to tell him about the BLM poster and that I wanted it down. It is a political message about getting rid of police officers, rioting, burning buildings down while King Governor Welch just sits on his throne and watches. We all know. I am nine years old and I know that. Get the posters out of our schools. Courage is contagious, so be courageous. Boom! That was epic. All across this country, we are seeing a majority of black people, black parents standing up saying, you will not teach that my child is oppressed. You will not teach that my child is second rate. You will not teach my child that he can't get ahead. You will not teach my child that he's got to be back on the new plantation where only you liberals know how to take care of us. Thank God, hallelujah, amen, a revival of liberty, a revival of freedom, a revival is breaking out. Buckle up, baby, because we're just getting started. The masks, the muzzles are off, and free speech is back in style. Oh, the liberals are not going to like this one. Thank you so much for watching. Give us a thumbs up and a like. Make sure you are a subscriber to the channel. Smack the bell to get notification of my next epic rant.